Damaged Defenders by Sherzad. Chapter 127 Rogue and Logan. Rogue sighed as she flapped down on the couch and then grabbed the remote. Logan and John had both left a couple hours ago, leaving her to her own devices, and she'd spent much of the time thinking. The last three weeks had been something else. What even was her life anymore? It was a good thing she had at least some innate ability to roll with the punches, or the last eight months or so would have seen her in a funny farm. But as bad as manifesting had been, as bad as the whole Magneto mess had been, this kind of took the cake on bad, and it wasn't even stuff that directly affected her that was getting her gulped. Don't get her wrong, the whole insane alien bent on wiping out all life and he's heading this way thing was terrifying. But it was terrifying in that slightly disconnected way where it didn't quite seem real, despite knowing it was. It was just so wild, so out there, that it was hard to credit. Plus, she was not one of the folks that was gearing up to fight that bastard. Though she'd been considering changing that, there wasn't a chance in hell she'd use her mutation to fight. Just... No. Hell no. She did not want a Jatari, or worse, that crazy asshole running around in her head, even temporarily, if, you know, the shadow copy of Logan still roaming around on her brain could destroy the new stuff coming in. It slash he had managed with the mental echo of Magneto, but, yeah, the Jatari and Thanos were something else altogether. Still being unable to use her mutation to fight didn't mean she couldn't throw down with the others at all, especially given what they were going to be facing. She was seriously considering asking Natasha to teach her how to shoot. Natasha had shown willing to do at least some teaching, after all. She was showing Darcy a few of her moves, much to Darcy's very vocal glee. Rogue had a feeling that the only reason Natasha hadn't offered the same to her was that Natasha knew how severely uncomfortable Rogue was with close physical contact when it came to anyone but Logan. And speaking of Logan, he was the primary source of the stuff that was bugging her. Well, him and Barnes. Because the advent of Barnes had kicked a hornet's nest where the worst of Logan's fuzzy memories were concerned. If Logan had gotten 12 hours of sleep in the last three weeks, Rogan would be shocked as hell. On top of the lack of sleep and resurgence of very ugly memories, the whole someone else got tortured thing was pissing Logan off something fierce. There'd been a reason, aside from his general lack of concern for the life and limb of bad guys, he'd been in kill them all mode during the attack on the castle. How Logan had been managing to remain mostly calm and non-antagonistic, Rogue would never know. Just the echoes of those memories running around in her head had her cranky as hell. Fortunately, she wasn't getting hit anywhere near as hard in the nightmares department as Logan was. Honestly, those memories kind of made her wish she had a more combat-usable mutation, because the temptation to hurt those guys and the ones that had worked Barnes over down and slaughtered them like the monsters they were was insanely high, and that was her. Minus any Logan influence! The echo of Logan in her head was about 10,000 times worse, which, aside from Logan going more taciturn and antisocial than he usually was, was how she knew he was not having a good time of it lately. Due to Logan's markedly frayed temper, Rogue had been sticking close and making a point of keeping even further clear of physical contact with anyone than she usually was. She didn't need the echo of him in her mind to know that he was unbelievably protective of her. Having her close by and safe removed two additional stressors, not to mention the fact that she had a better chance of shivying him into a relatively good mood than pretty much anyone else in the tower. Fortunately, since the attack on the castle, Logan seemed to be returning to his usual. Venting his considerable temper on legitimate deserving targets had gone a long way to calming Logan down. Rogue gave it another week before he'd be back to normal. Maybe sooner if the team hit Hydra again before then. Honestly, the thing that made the last couple months really seem surreal was the fact that Jean had homework to do. Seriously, it messed with her head more than a little. A 
aliens wandering around galactic level war planes and alliances being made, the press being messed with, 10,000 different kinds of high level drama playing out every single day all around her, and then, oh, I have a math test I need to do. Yeah, messed with her head. Just a little. Fortunately, the school year was finally done with, so she had a couple months to just chill. She was seriously considering just getting a GED at this point, though. Going to a regular school was totally out of the question, both because of her mutation and because of her link to the Avengers. That was just asking for her to get kidnapped. Again. Getting tutors in the tower would be a headache and a half. Well, Tony could doubtlessly work it, so she got the school credits for learning from the gang rather than books. Well, most of the gang was going to be up to their hairlines in trying to save the planet and who knew what other shenanigans for the next year. Finding time in there to tutor her was going to be problematic. Even commuting to Xavier's for school would be problematic due to their involvement in saving the planet and additional shenanigans. It wasn't like she'd be able to work in the normal world, after all. At least not as things stood. Her mutation was way too dangerous for that. At least with the X-Men and Avengers, they knew about her mutation, understood how dangerous it was, and acted accordingly. It wasn't like the Avengers, at least, kept a ten-foot circle around her, clear at all times, or anything like that. They were just really good and really subtle, and avoiding getting anywhere near any of her exposed skin without treating her like a pariah at the same time. The X-Men and the kids at the mansion had been a little less successful in that, for the most part. Oh, the Professor and a few others, Kurt, Bobby, Kitty, and Jubilee mostly, hadn't treated her like she was Typhoid Mary, but most of that lot had. The worst of it was that Rogue couldn't blame them. Some of them had, after all, seen her drop Logan, of all people, with her mutation. Then there was Loki. Rogue was kind of pissed that she'd missed the Asgard party that had resulted in Odin getting bitched out. Though she'd heard all about what Narcy had done multiple times, usually accompanied by a lot of smirks and laughter, which the story deserved because, damn, Narcy definitely had a set of brass ones on her pulling that. The thing was, Loki reminded Rogue of John, hurt, angry as hell, twitchy, suspicious, and fully expecting only the worst that people were capable of to be aimed his way. He seemed to be perpetually surprised and thrilled whenever anyone treated him with common human decency or, you know, showed any interest in his magical abilities or worse, praised or admired him. All of which said really, really bad things about how he got treated in Asgard. Kind of made her want to punch a few dozen hundred people in the face. Logan gave an amused snort as he returned to the quarters he shared with Rogue and John, a box tucked under one arm. John himself was right behind him, another box in his hand. Rogers had, rather understandably, not even begun to get rid of the burr under his saddle where Hydra was concerned and had called a team meeting this morning. Things were... Well, chaotic at the moment around the world. About half the governments on the planet were visibly and audibly having spasms for any of a number of reasons. The other half were probably having spasms too. They were just being quiet about it. And then there were the civvies. Seemed like every person in existence was freaking out about something. Justifiably, in most cases, Logan had to admit. But so... With everyone flailing about like fish out of water, Rogers had wanted to capitalize on the chaos. The Avengers were, per Prepper's press conference, busy playing host to alien allies. Hydra wasn't going to expect them to come calling because of that. There was even a good chance Hydra would try to take advantage of the Avengers being so busy to pull something. Rogers wanted to hit first. Absolutely nobody had argued with him. And not just to humor him, either. They'd spent the last few hours carving out a half day in their insane schedule to go kick Hydra butt. Fortunately, it hadn't been too hard. Yeah, they'd have alien allies running around, but it wasn't like they were helpless. And the non-fighters in the gang were fully capable of keeping the allies entertained for a lot longer than a half day while the Avengers took care of business. At the end of the meeting, Stark had handed out uniforms to folks. Some, like the one for the Gajan and the Spider Kid, were experimental to see if they were flexible enough to permit the sort of gymnastics those two got up to. The others were just updated. 
Better protection for the folks who didn't heal in five seconds flat without making the outfits bulky for the most part. At least according to Stark. Logan was willing to bet there was more to it than that. Logan was man enough to admit he was looking forward to putting his claws through the hearts of a few more of those bastards. They specifically may not have had a hand in what had been done to him, but they'd done similar to Barnes. It was therapeutic as hell to kick bastards like that in the teeth. Especially since, after that first clip of memory involving Rogers, Logan's had several more. All of them, so far, involving Rogers in some way. On one end, it was a relief to have a few more memories of his life before the bastards had got a hold of him. On the other hand, well, yet more memories of bloodshed, pain, and death, if in a completely different context than the vague, fuzzy memories he had of the experiments done on him. Rogue was watching the TV when he walked in. She glanced over, one eyebrow going up at the boxes they both carried. So, what's the verdict? She wanted to know. Logan headed for his room to try the new suit on, and John split off to his room to do the same thing. We're at not tomorrow. Hit another Hydra base. Kind of figured that, Rogue said, her volume not changing a bit even when he closed the bedroom door. Logan always appreciated that sort of thing. By this point, most of the Avengers had caught on to how good his hearing was and did what they could to accommodate it. They forgot, sometimes, but it was natural to raise your voice to be heard when someone was far away. The X-Men had caught on, too, but, well, there was only so much that could be done in a house up to its ears in teenagers. It had grated on his nerves and temper, but there hadn't been anything anyone could do about it. Things were a lot quieter in the tower. So is the whole gang going, or just a few folks? Rogue wanted to know. Only some above us. Logan said, Rogers, of course, and Barnes, me and Pyro, the Cajun, and the Spy Twins. Logan smirked as he said the last. Spy Twins was what Stark had coined Brighton and Romanov. It was apt enough that half the Avengers called them that when talking about both of them. Rogers is sad. We're the ones that will be least involved in the glad handling with the folks coming to check Earth out. Logan continued, and truth be told, he was glad of an excuse to escape for a few hours. On top of being antisocial by nature, Logan... Well, he could admit he was less than polite. He was plain spoken, blunt as heck, to be honest, and completely unafraid to call people on their shit to their faces. Which was probably not the best idea with such new allies. Granted, he didn't think most of them were going to be a problem, but a few would or could be. If even one of the Asgardians that would eventually be coming over gave Loki crap, there was going to be trouble. It would be a toss-up as to who got to them first, to be honest. And from what he'd seen of the recordings from Stark and Roger's tour of the realms, the elves were going to be a nightmare to deal with. Makes sense, Rogue said. Logan gave the new uniform one last tug, then walked back out into the living room. Rogue grinned at him. Snazzy. Logan snorted, amused. The uniform was black leather like the X-Men one, but a good deal thinner and more flexible. It was also sleeveless, which Logan appreciated. Gave him a full range of motion, and he wouldn't have to deal with blood-soaked gloves and sleeves every time he fought. There was also thin armor plating across his abdomen, the only place on his body that was even marginally in need of protection. While his healing factor could and did deal with injuries in seconds, Logan appreciated not having to depend on that more than absolutely necessary. Amusingly, Stark had taken a page straight out of Xavier's book, replacing the X in a circle logo on his chest and belt buckle was an a in a circle, then in a light matte gray. Visible at a glance for identification by any civilians he might be working with, without being reflective and thus giving Logan's position away if he was trying to be sneaky. I'm gonna head down to the gym, break this in. Logan told her, have fun, Rogue called after him.